looking for magic cards, Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a Mardu combo deck titled Strict Diet as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck is very straightforward. We're playing 8 creatures that prevent Enter the Battlefield abilities from happening. 4 copies of Hushbringer, 2 mana, 1 2 Fairy with Flying and Life Link, saying creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger, as well as 4 copies of Strict Proctor from Strixhaven, the 2 mana, 1 3 Spirit Cleric with Flying, saying whenever a permanent entering the battlefield causes causes a triggered ability to trigger, counter that ability unless its controller pays 2 mana. And we're going to be playing a bunch of creatures that have negative enter the battlefield abilities that we would rather prevent. So in the case of Strict Proctor, we're simply going to decline to pay the 2 mana, even if we have the 2 mana available. And which creatures are we going to try and combo with our Hushbringer and Strict Proctor? We've got 4 copies of Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, the 2 mana 6-6 six, six legendary Elder Giant. When it enters the battlefield, we have to sacrifice it unless it escaped. So if we play Croxa with a Proctor or Hushbringer in play, we can keep our 2 mana 6-6 six, six Elder Giant instead of having to sacrifice it or escape it. And whenever Croxa enters the battlefield or attacks, then each opponent has to discard a card, and each opponent who didn't discard a non-land card this way loses 3 life. So we're not going to get the Enter the Battlefield ability that makes the opponent discard, but we will still get the attack trigger from Croxa that makes the opponent discard a card with each attack. And then we've got another interesting creature to combo with Hushbringer and Strict Proctor, which is Clankbridge Troll, the 5 mana 8 8 troll with Trample and Haste. And when a troll enters the battlefield, normally target opponent creates 3 0 1 white goat creature tokens. And at the beginning of combat on our turn, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. And if a player does tap the troll, you gain 3 life and you get to draw a card. So the opponent usually gets quite a bit of sacrifice fodder to keep feeding to the troll. But if we have a Strict Proctor or Hushbringer and play the troll, the opponent doesn't get any goats, and we get this nice 8 8 Trampler with haste that can get in there right away. So these are some of the combos in the deck. Then we also have two copies of Carvac, the Spiteful, a 4 mana 3 2 legendary human warlock, saying other creatures get minus 1 minus 1. So that's another way to combo with our Clankbridge Troll. If we don't have Hushbringer or Strict Proctor, we simply play Carvac followed by a Troll, and the goats die as soon as they enter the battlefield, so the opponent usually doesn't have much to sacrifice. And then to tie the deck together, we also have two copies of a Varagoth of Blood Sky Sire, the 3 mana 2 3 legendary demon rogue with Death Touch, and has Boast for 1 on a black, which lets us search our library for a card and put it on top of our deck. So that can also help us assemble these various combos. And then to round out the deck, we've got some interaction to make sure we don't die before we manage to set up these powerful plays, with a bit of spot removal at 2 mana with 2 copies of Heartless Act to destroy creatures without any counters on it. We've got 2 copies of Vanishing Verse to exile targets a monocolored permanent, so it can potentially hit powerful artifacts and enchantments too, like Amber Cleave and the Great Henge. And then two copies of Rip Apart, which can deal three damage to a creature or planeswalker or destroy target artifact or enchantment. So we've got a bit of flexibility here, can also potentially search those up with Varagoth. And then uh, two copies of Soul Shatter, a three mana instant, making each opponent sacrifice a creature or planeswalker with the highest mana value among creatures and planeswalkers they control. And then of course we're playing a red deck in 2021, so we're gonna have four copies of Bone Crusher Giant, can stomp dealing two damage, and then play powerful 4-3 creature afterwards. And then four copies of Thrilling Discovery, to gain two life we may discard two cards, and if we do draw three, so that's a way to filter through the deck and discard additional combo pieces we don't need. And then the mana base includes 24 lands, we've got all 12 pathways in the Mardu colors, as well as one of each basic land, with one copy of Fabled Passage to search those up. And then we've got our Savai Triome in the Mardu colors, two copies of Temple of Malice and two copies of Temple of Silence. Now the temples are a bit of a nombo with our Strict Proctor, so we'll have to pay the two mana if we want to scry, but typically we're fine playing the temples as soon as possible. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand, missing Croxa and Troll, but a decent start with Hushbringer and Proctor, so we have a backup, and there's Croxa, perfect. So, do I keep a land? Don't really need one. Opponent with a Catria Trium. So, Teamer Colors. In case they have a Stomp, Probably better to play Proctor instead of Hushbringer. Let's 
And then hopefully next turn put a croc sign play. Opponent ramping with cultivates. So yeah, if our opponent just ramps straight into an Ugin, we could be in trouble. But for now we get to have our fun. If we have the two spare mana, we can decide to only counter the Sacrifice trigger, but still let the discard trigger from Croxar resolve. So that's certainly a play we can make. So our opponent's got access to six mana here. Heart casts a Shark Typhoon. So we want to find our Vanishing Verse or Rip Apart to deal with that. So we can go digging with Discovery. And then probably don't need Hushbringer anymore. Another Croxa, it is legendary. We can Heartless Act one shark they make at least. Opponent discarding Battle of Frost and Fire, so they've got some giants in there, or maybe just using it as a sweeper. And then we can still stomp the opponent end of turn. So even if they were to wipe the board somehow, we can still follow up with another Proctor into Croxa. Waking the Trolls. Okay. So it's going to make a large shark, which we will promptly destroy. So I could attack and then see what you put on discards here. Opponent's at five. So I could play Croxa with the idea of just making the opponent discard. And then I can maybe finish them off with Bone Crusher. It's probably worth it. So play Croxa. Alright, so there's two triggers and two Proctor triggers. So this is the one that makes the opponent discard. So that one I want to pay for. And then the next one we want to counter, so we'll pay. Opponent discards Genesis Ultimatum, which would have been pretty dangerous. So glad we played Croxa. So they're at five, they just top decked. Can they cast a spell to make a shark? And if they can, they would still be dead to stomp plus a Croxa trigger here. So yeah, looks like our opponent's dead. They can make a wolf token, but that's not going to save them. Attack. Opponent's at two. And Stomp will close out the game here. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. We've got our Hushbringer, Discovery to potentially dig towards Croxa or Troll. We'll lead with the Triumph for now. Going on to red white with a turn one stone binders familiar into a stomp, which also grows a familiar, puts the giant in exile, so that's a neat interaction. And now we can no longer use Heartless Sack to kill the 2 2. So, yeah, we'll just play Hushbringer here. Could have also played this as a red source, I suppose, to make it easier to discover a plus temple next turn. Hushbringer counters the apparition. So I can discover a opponent could be a Winota deck, in which case keeping up Heartless Act could also be savvy here. So I'm gonna do that, just play temple. 
keep a parlous act. Might as well attack for one. And we'll see whether or not Winota shows up. Uh, just another stomp. Fair enough. Gonna grow the familiar. Could remove counters from it. Or we can kill a robber instead. So Karva can shrink down their team. And kind of stem the bleeding here, and that maybe sets up a troll next turn. Blade Historian. Still kind of scary here. So I could trade for the Apparition. I think I would rather just take it here. And then we can kill the Historian at instant speed. So, let's play this untapped and pass. Apparition can exile Karvek. So, that's unfortunate. Grows a familiar too. But we can Vanishing Verse the Apparition to make a 4-4 token, and then Soul Shatter to kill Historian. Which will set up a decent ambush. Opponent attacks with all. Could also just exile the 4-4 Familiar. If I exile this apparition, we get a 4 4. I'm forced to trade. And our opponent still hits us for 2. So it's not ideal. But I think I'd rather decrease the opponent's board. Since they're probably still playing with Winota in their deck. And now we can discover. And there's Kroxa plus Hushbringer, so we've got a Wombo Combo. Although at this point we can also just escape Kroxa, which seems better, make the opponent discard. I'll be at 2, and then next turn I might have to Discovery to gain life, and then escape Kroxa. Got rid of an Elite Spellbinder. So we're at two facing Bone Crusher and Apparition. Alright, and a stomp. So let's uh, think this through. I could just stomp Apparition, play my own Bone Crusher, which would keep the board stable. The only way to escape Crocs and survive is if I discovery first and find an appropriate land. So that seems riskier. So, let's just do this. Hope to dodge Winota or Blade Historian off the top. Selfless Savior is annoying, but could have been worse. They still get to play the other Bone Crusher, though. Alright, so now I can Croxa and then play Hushbringer. Doesn't matter too much what we exile. Still dead to a few top decks, but stable on the board. Right, just a land, so opponents does not attack. 
and uh, I'm not really in a position to attack myself. So we'll have to wait to draw an extra cards to cast Discovery, so yeah, we gotta dodge a few top decks here. Professor of Symbology does not trigger because of Hushbringer, so just a 2-1. And we'll Discovery. Could also attack with Crocs, I'll play another one, but it's probably not gonna cut it here. And there's a troll we can play. So we're starting to turn a corner. And then, do I attack? Still pretty risky. Can maybe send a Hushbringer. Since the opponent doesn't have a ton of removal to deal with Troll and Croxa, I guess Skyclave Apparition would do it. So yeah, I think we should stay put. And then next turn with Bonecrusher, providing an extra blocker, we can get more aggressive. Ooh, Blade Historian off the top. That's unfortunate. So that's gonna force a few trades here. I can probably just chump the giant with Hushbringer, eat Professor of Symbology to keep Troll, trade Croxa, which we can escape again. So, can escape Croxa, have an extra blocker. And I can play the giant as a creature. So we'll move to combat first. See if the opponent wants to do anything. So I could attack, I would only have two blockers back, so we lose to maybe a Skyclave Apparition. But I have to start turning the corner at some point. So I think I still go for it. Hit for eight. Escape. And play Giants. Alright, let's see what they draw. Just attacks with the Bone Crusher. I can trade for Croxa. Opponent can sacrifice. A creature to the troll, potentially. I think that's fine. And a Stonebinder's familiar. Alright, so now we can rip apart Blade Historian. Croxa will make them lose 3 life. So they're forced to sacrifice Familiar. We get to draw, deal 4, and Croxa will close out the game. Alright, so very close one here against Boros Winota. Luckily didn't have to face Winota, but we did get to see some cool interactions from the opponent as well. The Stonebinder's Familiar putting in a ton of work onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing red mana. And it's missing a second creature to combo with Hushbringer, so it's not great. Could still work out with the Scry. As soon as we find red mana, I get to Discovery, try and find Croxa or Troll. But I think we can do better. Alright, this is a little bit better. And then probably get rid of one of the removal spells, let's go with Heartless Act. And then probably fine to keep Hushbringer, that way Varagoth can look for Croxa. Opponent is blue-black with a turn to Remorse. So can have a look. Probably takes Varagoth. Can still play Hushbringer. And a Ruin Crab we can destroy. The Crab could also help us mill a Croxa, but probably still want it gone. 
And then Ripapart can answer Tutelage, so I think I use his Soul Shatter here. And I'll cast it in the opponent's upkeep in case they have a counter spell. Of course, it could have a 3 mana counter, but Drown in the Loch. Pretty likely to be in the opponent's deck. And this way, if they counter the Soul Shatter with Drown, they didn't get to use their mana efficiently last turn. Alright, opponent's gonna just kill the Hushbringer instead. Alright, there's a troll, still gonna be effective without a Hushbringer. And probably don't need double whites. The rest can take one of my removal spells, but cannot take the troll. Alright, Strict Proctor could be good. Doesn't seem like her opponent has a counter spell in hand. So yeah, just waiting for an extra lands. Disciple will have to pay two if they want to make his discard. Goodbye, rip apart. And there's a land, perfect. So we get to smash for eight unless they want to sag the disciple. Alright, so we'll just hit for one and Croxa, nice addition. Opponent's gonna draw four to refuel, but they're pretty far behind on board. And they're about to be even further behind, as their opponent's just gonna take 17 and be dead. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand doesn't really have any combo pieces, it's just... Got some removal on a Bone Crusher Giant, so it's not incredibly exciting. Could still be fine. I'll try it. We'll see how the deck plays without comboing off right away. But it might be the case that we just need to mulligan aggressively to assemble our two card combos. The Goose I'll happily stomp. And there's a Strict Proctor, so we can play that next turn. Two mana for a stone coil for two. And yeah, the Clank Bridge Troll is gonna be nice with our Strict Proctor. Could see your opponent mutate onto the stone coil. So that could be interesting because Vanishing Verse is multicolor, so wouldn't be able to exile the serpents and the Heartless Act. Also not the best answer to it. But Yorvo we can hit with a Vanishing Verse. So we're just gonna pass a turn with all our interaction available. I could Thrilling Discovery to try and hit my land drop, but I don't really want to discard anything. So by fetching a Swamp, we'll have access to both Verse and Heartless Act. So our opponent mutates onto the Serpent. So I think I'm gonna have to Heartless Act the Serpent. Because once they mutate onto it, I can no longer Vanishing Verse nor Heartless Act it. Or, well, the Heartless Act would simply remove two counters. So we'll remove three counters from the Serpents. They still get their Gem Racer, but at least they won't be able to attack with it right away. Strict Proctor also counters Yorvo's ability. Alright, there's our land, so we get to run out Clangbridge Troll and presumably hit for 8. Gem Razor does have reach, so can't attack with a Proctor. Now a green Stompy deck could potentially get enough power and toughness in play to block our Troll. Gilded Goose only makes a food token if they pay the 2 mana.
opponent does pay. Gem Razor attacks, so they might be sacrificing Goose to the troll, we'll see here. For now we'll keep Pathway in hand so we can discard it to Discovery next turn. And if they sacrifice a Goose, we'll draw cards, we'll maybe Discovery plus Giant. And our opponent concedes, alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. We've got a bit of interaction, some ways to filter through the deck to assemble our various combos. So, let's see what we're up against here. Then we'll have to decide what to potentially discard to our discovery. So, we're definitely gonna need red mana. And then we usually also need double black. So, play our red source out first. Opponent is blue red with an improbable alliance. Alright. So, for now, probably thrilling discovery. And then I can discard one land. And Soul Shatter might not be great. Alright, we assembled the Hushbringer troll combo. Although against blue red, Hushbringer might be vulnerable to some burn spells. So for now I like playing Varagoth. And then next turn we can maybe Hushbringer plus Stomp. Could see a card draw effect end of turn. Right. Fire Prophecy takes care of Varagoth, that's fine. And a Retriever Phoenix. Gonna find a lesson. So that's a fine target for Stomp. Ooh, top decked Croxa. And we have the mana to play Croxa here, so... Yeah, let's go for it. Get to keep our 6-6. Six -six. And Blue Red usually doesn't have an easy time answering large creatures. They can maybe bounce Croxa to delay the inevitable. Hushbringer stops Retriever Phoenix, gets in for four. A land into Troll would be pretty devastating here, and there it is. Attack you for 15, trigger Croxa, and her opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that... Is doing some stuff. We've got Carvac into Troll. So that's potentially powerful. Yeah, I'll try it. Can maybe play a Discovery, discarding another Discovery and something else. So which land am I going to need? Probably red. Although we also eventually need double black. But we'll have to probably cast Discovery first. So we'll try this. Sequencing our lands in the stack can be tricky. Alright, don't know if we have time for double troll. So I could discover discarding giants another discovery. Or I can discard troll plus maybe giants. Yeah. Let's be greedy. Alright, so there's one black mana. Opponent on seven dwarves. And a Croxa, okay. Probably gonna have to Heartless Act something here. Although keeping it for Torbran or Magda could also be worth it. There's Magda. So we'll Heartless Act as soon as we get the chance. Don't want to put on making any treasure. So ideally draw swamp. Hushbringer also works. How about a nice turn four Croxa? With no strings attached. And 
and yeah, Swamp still gives me Clank Bridge Troll without downside. Tyrite Sanctum, an interesting addition as well. Their opponent has shown Infuriate already, so they seem to have a few pump spells in there. Yeah, I think I'm fine with trading for two pump spells here. It's gonna be Infuriate. Plus a Storm Strike, fair enough, so no trade. Thanks to First Strike. How about another Croxa? <laughs> well, I'm not getting my Swamp that I want, but I'm not complaining. There's Magda. Yeah. Show me what you've got. Another Infuriate, sure. Keeping our life total nice and high to buy time for Clagbridge Troll. Or we can just keep drawing Croxa. Works for me too. This game has been pretty interesting to say the least. Now they can use a Sanctum to potentially make Magda indestructible. Although they'll have to turn it into a god first. So Breakneck Berserker on defense. Temple finally lets me play Troll next turn. And a Varogoth seems like a reasonable draw. So they can use Sanctum to put a god counter on Magda. That seems fine, make it indestructible next turn. I think I'm gonna be swinging in the meantime. Essentially 9 damage coming through. And a troll is going to give us another 8 power haste creature. Assuming Hushbringer survives. Rimrock Knight pumps Magda. So I guess her opponent just wants to save their treasure for Magda instead of using it on the Sanctum. We fall to 12, but Rimrock Knight can block, so they look pretty dead on board before we played a troll, but a Clank Bridge troll would have made short work of the opponent's life total as well. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand looks good. Probably fetching for basic planes, so we can play turn 2 Hushbringer. Could still use an extra land or two. Since if we fetch planes, we're gonna have difficulties casting Bone Crusher and Troll at the same time. Turn one, a Lovestruck Adventured. Croxa, alright. We do have more black sources in the deck than red sources, so maybe we'll play the pathway as a red source and then we can still either discovery or stomp and ideally find black mana for Croxa right away. Alright, we did. And our opponent does have two mana up, so Heartless Act could punish us for playing Croxa here. So I'll start by attacking, see if there's a response. Opponent does seem to be holding something. Could be a Plum of the Forbidden, as our opponents may be playing the Black Green Sacrifice deck. So I think we still go for Croxa here. Opponent just passes. Alright, and our opponent scoops it up, so turn 3 Croxa, no big deal. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, somehow managed to draw all our basic lands. So we've got a Proctor and a Discovery to try and find our missing creatures. I'll try it. And then probably lead with Mountain. Turn 1 Rune Crab. We'll probably get a Proctorite there. 
And then next turn we can answer the crab if needed. Or we can keep digging with Discovery. Another Rune Crab. And a land. But the Proctor is going to counter those as it's a permanent entering the battlefield. So no Rune Crab triggers for the opponent. Now I'll also have to pay two if I want to scry. So let's Discovery. Keep the rip apart since it can answer to Fairy's tutelage. Probably don't need Heartless Acts. And yeah, there's Croxa, perfect. So hit for one. And next turn I can play Croxa, plus maybe rip apart if needed. So hopefully the opponent doesn't have a counterspell. Stern dismissal bounces Proctor. Gives the opponent their ruin cramp triggers. But we can play Proctor and Croxa in the same turn. And for two mana, it's unlikely that they have many counter spells here. We'll tap like this so I can have double black in play. cycles of frantic inventory. So yeah, opponent staring down Croxa now. Have a backup in hand and the rip apart as interaction, so don't hate my position. Mystic Sanctuary can get back. A card here. Proctor gonna demand a tax being paid, including for the Sanctuary, actually, so... It's gonna cost them two mana to get back their Stern Dismissal. Opponent trying to figure out which Strict Proctor trigger covers which effect here. Decides to just mill me for six. And let's attack. So Strict Proctor putting in a ton of work this game. And uh, what's next? Still 34 cards remaining, not too afraid of getting milled out. And I can just play Bone Crusher Giant here. Got an answer for Teferi's tutelage, which is always nice. Vanishing Verse, another answer to it as well. Probably not going to need Karvak in this matchup. So opponent's going to pay 4 mana to mill 6. Not the best rate when you're used to getting those for free. And a Wind Robber. Well, might be worth it to play Karvek now, just so they cannot jump with a Wind Robber. And attack. Future Wind Robbers now also pretty much useless for the opponent. Takes eight. Don't think I need to rip apart a crab. Can maybe do so next turn. Yeah, strict proctor. Putting Croxa and Clankbridge Troll on a strict diet, but also very effective against Rune Crab. Tutelage also gonna need to pay two mana. So her opponent declines to draw, and her opponent explodes. We even had the rip apart to answer it, so. Yeah, this was quite a beating, and uh, overall I've been very impressed with how the decks performed today. 
The total of 8 copies between Hushbringer and Strict Proctor make the deck a lot more consistent than it would be otherwise, and then we've got a nice bit of interaction to work with. Didn't get to see Veragoth in action much and Carvac plus Troll, but those are in the deck as well for additional consistency. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.